Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is another thrift to treasure video where I take four items that I've thrifted or that was given to me and I turn them into something totally different, reimagine them to normally resell. Sometimes something turns out so cute I have to keep it. Um, but I post these videos every single week, so if this is something you enjoy, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. This is the kind of stuff I do all day, every day. I am a reseller, um, but I pick four, four things to show y'all how to do, and hopefully I, that inspires y'all to look at things in a different way and maybe try to flip y'all own items. All right, so this week we're going to start off with, um, let's start with these scrap pieces of wood. So I was inspired by something I saw at an antique shop. I do not go to antique shops often anymore. You know, kids, antique shops, they don't mix. But a few, um, probably a few months ago, me and my husband were able to get away for the day by ourselves. And we went to an antique shop and I did buy some stuff, but I'm also super inspired by antiques. So I took some pictures and I found this tray and I loved how they put it together. It was obvious they put you know, old pieces together look like an old cutting board and then some old tongue and groove. So I was like, I could do that. And these are some pieces. I always take cribs apart because there's so many amazing pieces, cribs, chairs, things like that. So I just been holding on to these and I thought I would try to recreate that um, tray today because right now interior decorating is all about layering so you want to like layer pieces and a great way to start off a layer is with a tray and then you set stuff on top of that and that's like really trending right now and i've been selling a ton of trays i can never keep them in stock people love layering their design if you're not layering you're not doing it right okay next occasionally it doesn't happen often but occasionally I have pieces that do not sell. And this has been the case with these metal chairs. I already redid them. I've had them for a few months. I think I put them on two of my live sales. They haven't sold. But now it's the holiday season. These chairs are green and rusty and perfect. All I have to do is add a little bit of red to them and I feel like they're gonna sell. Because again, layering. How cute would this be somewhere in your house but maybe like a present or something on top of it, a little basket with some presents, Christmas trees, or even just like a blanket hung over it. And they are perfect for the holidays because they fold up flat like this. So if you don't want to keep them out year round, all you do is fold them up flat. They store super easy. And the next thing is something for a customer. Now, when I'm out thrifting and looking for stuff, I'm always looking for like good quality pieces. So even though this is MDF and it's been, I don't know if you can tell, but it definitely has water damage. So this has to be removed. But look at this awesome metal, I don't know, this metal part, whatever it's called. It's super, super nice, rusty already. So I picked this up. It's already sewed. I just have to finish it up. So I know for sure I want to do wood here. And then, I don't know, we'll see how it looks and goes from there. Go from there. I, I won't know until I see it all together if I want to add more to it or just leave it like it is. So I'll make this, that decision later on. And then if you saw the video of all the unboxing of the stuff from my cousin, she made me a bunch of these uh, floppy primitive stockings. So that's what's hanging right here. How cute, y'all. Um, I'm going to keep these plain, but these two, I want to add something more to them. So we're going to use these stamps. Y'all, I'm totally in love with stamps now, even though I am not good at it at all. I love the way it looks, but I'm just going to put this out there in the universe. I'm having a really hard time finding like the stamps that are in my head. So if anybody knows anything about creating your own stamp line, I'm going to be into that. Cause you never know. I mean, that this is how this all started because I could not find the products that were in my head. So I just started making them myself. So anyway, I ordered this off of Amazon. It's a whole alphabet. So we're gonna use that to stamp on the stockings. And the link to this is in the description. I went ahead and I created an Amazon store. So that way, like I've been getting tons of questions, what I use, where I get this. So I just went ahead and made an Amazon store and put all my favorite products in there so you can just go to it and order it. 
And if you want to click on that link and shop all your Amazon groceries on there, I will not stop you. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that's how it works that if you click on the link, like whatever you buy, even from that link, um, I get a commission off of it, which is awesome. So anyway, yep, yeah, we're going to try out these stamps. Hopefully they work great. And yeah, let's get started because I dropped the baby off at daycare today and apparently there's only a half day today that I did not know about. So I need to get this stuff done ASAP before I got to pick up the, you know, the watch out. To get the look that the chair has now, what I did was I just Mod Podge some book paper onto the seat of the chair. So I'm going to keep that look. But I want to do a grain sack stripe on it and the grain sack will actually be the book paper. So what I'm doing is I'm using masking tape. Painter's tape works as well. This is just what I had on hand. And I am marking off where I want my stripes to be. And then I'm going to use some red um, chalk paint from Walmart in the color lacquer. Which this is from last year and it's kind of like clumpy. So I definitely need to go and get me a fresh... Um, bottle of paint but i'm going to put two coats on this so i'm quickly going to get the first coat on i'm using my favorite wooster angle brush it is in my amazon store and it makes the trim work very easy now the fun part take it off i don't wait for it to dry once my second coat is on i go ahead and take it off now the second stripes the ones on each side i thought they were a little bit big so i'm going to go ahead and fix that i'm just going to put another piece of tape down and I'm going to paint in the red to make that stripe a little bit smaller and I think that's going to enhance the look of this. And what I did after this was done, I distressed the piece slightly and then I, still, I sealed it with Rust-Oleum clear coat enamel and I absolutely love the way this came out. It is the perfect little chair to add to your Christmas decor. All right, here we go. Let's try our hand at stenciling again. So I'm making words here. I'm going to say joy to the world. And what I did was I used the mat that came with my IOD stamps. And then I laid it on top and taped it to my cutting mat so I could use those lines in order to line everything up. Now the letters that I need to use twice, I'm just going to leave spaces for them. Oh. I see I got the I could not figure out what I did wrong with the T and the H so I kept like messing with it I couldn't figure it out finally I realized that the E was backwards <laughs> I was like okay am I losing it here I cannot figure it out so definitely you want to do it and then turn it over and make sure everything is correct all right it's good I did try it out on a piece of paper first just to make sure that it looked good I'm using the same red chalk paint that I used in the last project and I will use this throughout the whole season that way all my pieces look cohesive and I'm using the same red. I am using a foam brush and I'm just tapping the paint on to the stamps. You don't want to put too much paint but you want to put enough to have on your stamp. And I'm just going to wipe off like any spots that I got a little paint on. It is red, so you got to be extra careful. Okay, moment of truth. I was super nervous about this. All right, putting it down. You want to push it not too hard, but not too light. You do need to give it some pressure. I probably did not give it enough pressure, but I still think this looks great. That's why I love the stamp look because it just gives you like this worn old look. I just absolutely am loving how um, stamps look on pieces. I did find it much easier to do it on cloth 
than I did on a hard surface. And now I'm using the small um, backer that came with the, the alphabet that I ordered. And I'm gonna do that one letter at a time that I need to add in. This was actually a lot easier than I thought. And I did do, sorry, my head's in the way. I did do the, um, the same writing on the other side of this stencil. And I thought I did much better because I was more confident and I knew what to do and I knew if I messed it up, I could fix it. The only thing you can mess up is if you get extra paint on it, like a dot of red paint or something, you just might as well leave it. You're not getting that off. So definitely be careful with your paint, but I would say this is a win. I love the way this came out and actually I'm going to show you in the video in a second that on the other stocking I did the crockery stamp on it. Y'all, I am obsessed. It came out so, so cute. I mean, how amazing would that look in somebody's kitchen? Okay, let's go to the clip because y'all got to see how it came out. So cute. The next project is the tray. I like to visually set up my project so I can kind of see what they're gonna look like when I figure out the size. So the base is gonna be fence boards. It is a material that I use a lot. And then of course the little like scalloped edge pieces of wood will be the on the ends. I want it to be two-toned, so I'm gonna leave the wood, the fence boards, natural wood, and I'm going to spray the, we'll call it the handle parts, white. So I'm gonna spray them white with my spray gun, and then I'm going to distress them. Then once all that is dry, I am ready to put the piece together. I'm gonna put it together upside down, that way there's no nail holes in the white top. I'm gonna use my glue gun. This is my glue bot, I love it. And then I'm going to put the boards on top. I'm going to position them where they need to go. And then I'm going to use my 18 gauge nail gun and just nail them in through the back. The first step to this project is taking off the old screws. I was really worried they'd be rusted in, but luckily I was able to get them out. So that was a good sign. I'm gonna use that piece as a pattern to trace onto my new piece of wood. I'm using a piece of Cypress. I really liked it. It had a lot of veining and this cool knot in it. So, and it ended up being like the perfect size. So I'm gonna use my jigsaw to cut around the edges. I love my jigsaw, it's great for just little projects here and there. I really want to get a bandsaw, but that hadn't happened yet. Maybe soon, because that would make my life so much easier. Next, I'm going to sand all the edges. Just make sure everything is nice and round and there's no rough corners. So you want to sand the edges and then also sand the top and kind of round off the corners. Next, I'm going to use my antiquing mixture. I just want to make the wood look a little darker, a little more aged. So basically all this is, is antiquing wax mixed with water and it just gives new wood like this perfectly aged look. I use it all the time and all my pieces. It just works so wonderful. The last step is to attach the new wood back to the old iron part. So what I'm doing is I'm clamping the two pieces together and I'm using my drill bit and I'm gonna screw into the old holes. That way, the new piece of wood lines up perfectly with the old metal and then I will just screw it all together. I 
I hope you enjoyed this video and please leave a comment below and let me know which project was your favorite today. Thanks for watching and give this video a big